these success stories with friends of mine, clients of mine, people who have made a leap. They were in one spot and they wanted to get to the other spot and they took the leap. And I'm really interested in how people do this. So today I have Lisa Sears with me. And Lisa is a friend of mine who I met maybe a year and a half ago. And she is just a dynamo. You're going to be completely consumed by her energy. Uh, Lisa is a very, was a very corporate woman. She was extremely successful in her very corporate job, but she wanted something different. And I'm going to have her tell her story today. And she is now in the first year of her own business, which is called Brass Rings Tools for Change. And I'm going to have her tell you all about it. But Lisa, I just wanted to say thank you so much because I know how busy you are and you have a lot going on. So thank you for giving me your time today. Never too busy for Jen Lee. <laughs> You're such a doll. So I have questions for you, but I'm curious to where our conversation is going to go because I never know where our conversation is <laughs> going to go. But I would love for you to tell everybody um, who you are and kind of a little bit about your journey from where you were to where you are now. So I love to tell people that I'm a quitter. <laughs> I quit a really, really great job. And then I went into another job and I quit again. And I really think that's a part of my journey and my story. Um, I had a great career at the same place for almost 18 years. I was started at the bottom and I, I ended up in the executive team and did pretty much every role there, which I think is part of the problem when you're, it, it's a, a blessing and a curse when you're a small business owner because you can literally do all the pieces, but should you be doing all the pieces? That's a great question. So, right? Yeah. So about a year, a year and a half ago, I quit the second grade job. My husband, I mean, the poor guy, <laughs> he needs therapy. <laughs> You're going to quit again? <laughs> he just started but to I, expect it. So how yes. long before you quit? Congratulations <laughs> on your new job. How long before you quit? Totally. Oh, I'm glad that I have. He's really supportive. And he he's always like, ah, you always figure something out. So he wasn't too worried. But it is it is nerve wracking. I think part of our conversation about how nerve wracking is to go from really stable, really, you know, making more money than you need to having this driving force that says I want something different and everybody telling you you're crazy. Um, and, and really have, moving beyond those naysayers. So a year, I, I remember meeting with you and Colleen and me being like, I want to be a life coach. And you guys are like, looked at me like, you're nuts. Like you're a business coach. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I think that was another piece of my journey as I really rejected all of the years of experience that I had because I wanted to do something new. And I had people in my life like you and Colleen who said to me, no, that's really good experience and wisdom. And, you know, think about what you want to, you know, how you want to use that magical tool mm -hmm. um, in your business. So how so. did you know when you were in this corporate world, making a lot of money, you, were, you had a lot of influence and you loved it. It, it fed you for mm -hmm. a long time. But the, what you're implying here is that there was something underneath <clears throat> that was kind of driving you to say, uh, maybe I want to do this or maybe I want to do this. How, how did you tune into what that was? I think for me, I, I got my master's in management and I remembered how much I love to learn instead of teach. And it kind of sparked this idea that, um, I gave everybody else permission in my world. I really cultivated people and helped develop them, but I didn't give myself permission to really think about what I want. Um, I turned 40 a while ago. And <laughs> I was like, I've, I've really worked hard at making everybody else's dreams come true and having them be happy in culture. And, um, you know, I was the person that you had six laptops broken. I'll bring them home this weekend. I'll fix them. You know, I am spread out. And I realized I was just a lot of things to everybody else, but I never stopped and thought like, what, what do I want to do? I was like that. Yes, man. Yeah. And, and I realized it was, I was exhausted and I could blame a lot of other people, right? I could blame that this corporate life and, and the, the pressure and really the only body putting, I had a great boss. Oh my gosh. I, he loved to collaborate with me. And he really let me kind of pick and choose what I wanted, but I pick and chose everything. Yeah, um, so what I want people to hear from your story is <clears throat> you weren't miserable 
<clears throat> you weren't you weren't in that situation where you had to get out, but you still knew that there was something more, and you still knew that there was an itch that needed to be scratched. And when you tuned in and you started to notice your energy levels and you started to notice your patterns, that's when you clued into maybe maybe there's something more. Yeah, I was exhausted. <laughs> I was kind of forced into it. Yeah. Um, but I definitely, I just started thinking about what I wanted to do. And Which a lot really, of women don't ask themselves that no, question. I had never. I was like, you know, like perfect mom, perfect this. I'll show up to everything. Mm -hmm. I will, you know, and I'm I'm going to be that corporate mom that shows independent. You know, my my children how independent I can be, and and prove to everybody that I would never drop the ball. And I did. I stopped for a minute, and I was like, um, I think also being a fixer was killing me. Yeah perfection and fixing, um, you know, and people weren't asking me to do it. I was right. not asking for help and I was just doing it. Yep. And it was a way of you felt validated in the world by pleasing other people, fixing other things and being perfect all the time. That was how you were supposed to walk through the world. Right. And then it caught up with you. Caught up with me. Totally. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you and I have this experience of coaching other people. It's so easy to coach people when you've like screwed it up yourself. Yes. Like, I'm like, <laughs> oh, I got this because I did it. Oh, I've been there. I've made this mistake. Oh, I screwed this up. Let me help you. And still had a smile on my face. You know me. I'm kind of like happy. I'm going to make a joke. I'm funny. And I have this like energy state. Yeah. But I was like, ooh, I had this whole other thing going on. This whole other wall. So is that when you went back to school to get your life coach certification? It is. Okay. Um, I realized working for everybody and in it was not healthy for me. Um, and I really thought what for me, it was the driving forces. I want to drive my own culture. Mm -hmm. That was important. And I don't want to work with everyone. That was really important to me. So you wanted something of your own and you wanted own. to be able to pick and choose who you worked with. Absolutely. That's I the number one th those are the things that I hear from why people make this leap because it's terrifying, but they're so driven by those two things. They want freedom and they want to work with the people they want to work with. Mm -hmm. And being in the position I was in, I worked with financial advisors and I, I did coaching throughout my career and I would help them build their teams, mm -hmm. but I had to help all of them, even the people who just weren't engaged or didn't who, want to do the work or who weren't coachable. Not coachable. Right. Really There's nothing worse go. than trying to coach somebody who's not coachable, who doesn't want to be there. It's like teaching a ninth grader, Romeo and Juliet. They don't want to learn that shit. No. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. Um, and I had to show up. And I I just thought, no, I want to I wanna maybe have 10 people in my life that I can really go narrow and deep with. Mm -hmm. And make a, a bigger impact. Um, I was spread thin and I wasn't able to help. You know, if I had been able to work with like five teams, I think, you know, I had my own team. I had a lot of hats. Yeah. And, and I think I wanted more in those engagements and those connections. And so I wanted to me, drive the, the needle. Yes. So that's freedom and that's, you know, but with freedom comes responsibility. So you created, mm -hmm. what you did with your coaching training was you created Brass Rings Tools for Change. So mm -hmm. I'd love for you to tell everybody about what Brass Rings does and what kind of, where you are in your company's trajectory and why it's so important that we have Brass Rings Tools for Change in the world. Well, I will tell you that a lot of the coaching I do now, thanks to friends like you, is executive coaching and business coaching. And, you know, it's my sweet spot and my wisdom and my experience. And I, I think I love helping people kind of walk slowly down their path. Mm. But for me, a year in my business, I'm like, I just did all the stuff I tell everybody to do. So I think um, Brass Rings has changed a lot, and I'm okay with that. Um, I, I think we coach people to really understand their value and get, and, and get really into what they're going to provide to the world. Mm -hmm. And I, you and I talk about, I chased a lot of stuff for six months. Mm -hmm. So my business six months ago looks very different than my business now. I really thought I was going to change the world by being a life coach. Mm -hmm. And I, I did have people in my life like you, um, and Colleen, my business partner say, Hey, you know, maybe how do you learn how to love this because you're good at this right. and, and building that model. So brass rings has this 
um, executive coaching and business coaching aspect to it. So I really either help advisors that have their own small business um, and I help them with business strategies, but I help them tackle a lot of their mind chatter and their, mm-hmm. their mindsets. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot to own your own business. So a lot of worry, mm-hmm. um, a lot of, uh, you know, I, I now have a company where six people's lives depend on me. I had to bring in the money and there's, that's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. So I have a part of my business that is very based in, in kind of my natural group of people that I feel I get off a call and go, yes, that felt mm-hmm. great. Um, but I also, I, I'm really moving into this um, kind of programs on all the, all the shit that I sucked at and learned mm-hmm. tools for. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've struggled with engagement and getting to the gym and being healthy. So I put together a program around that and I've struggled with time management. I was the queen of you know, multitasking. My whole career was a multitask and really, um, you know, all the things they taught us were, it's like when you had a baby and they say on your back now, and then you have your next baby and they say, well, now put them on their side. And now, you know, then your, your kids have babies and now it's on your belly. And, you know, all those things we taught, we were taught through the years, finding some tools that actually work, Mm -hmm. um, and, and helping people with them, but I'm having the most fun with my leadership training right now Mm. and really engaging. Um, I was in my late thirties when I actually got the education I really was craving as a leader and a manager. Um, my master's was really like, Oh, confirmation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm doing that for a younger generation of managers and I'm really enjoying that. Um, so developing leaders. You're seeing the, you're seeing everything you learned and helping a, a younger group of people come up with those tools, finding it earlier in their career than you did. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because I think people crave direction and confirmation, Yes. Um, and I think new managers, we, we think they're, they're natural leaders and we promote them and then we just put them in an office somewhere. Like they're going to know what to do. Right. Right. They have no idea. I, I won it, which is probably where I, you know, kind of pushed into that perfection as like mm-hmm. trying to be perfect as a new manager. Well, you know, it takes time to develop people. So when you were leaving, um, I, and you're a confident woman. So I want to start by saying that you're like generally a confident, optimistic person. So I don't, you know, we, we talk about our anxiety and how our anxiety will pop up from time to time, but we don't walk around with anxiety on a daily basis, which is different than a lot of my clients who walk around with this anxiety all the time. So for them, making this leap is often really arduous. What, what were some of the thoughts that plagued you? <laughs> when you, I mean, we can talk about the leap that you made from leaving your lucrative job to starting your own business, mm-hmm. but I'd also really like to talk about what went on in your head during these first, this first year of your business where you said you kind of wandered around and tried this on, is this my business? Is this what it's going to look like until you kind of got narrow and deep? What were some of the shit in your head? I think the first six months I said yes to everything. Just like I did in my corporate world. Mm -hmm. I mean, to talk about repeating bad habits, I absolutely uh, said a yes to ever. I mean, I made websites for people. (laughs) Like, really? You know, I made my own website, which thank God someone else reskinned for me because it was not that great. But, you know, you're a new business owner. You got to put something out there. Yes. And I just seemed, you know, I wasn't really clear with setting some boundaries and, you know, people would call me for that one hour session. I'm like, this is not what I do. Like I want to do work. You know, I, I left so I could do some narrow and deep work with people. And now I'm just saying yes to everything. So I think when it comes to money, six months, the first six months are tough. Um, I don't know whether it's easy to come from it's, it almost felt harder for me knowing the money I make. And then I dropped and I could see like, you know, you see the bucket go down. And, and, and that for me was the hardest part. I'm, you know, I'm a business person. So, and I'm also, you know, I check my um, budget every week Mm -hmm. and, and I pay my bills on the first and the 15th (laughs) and then I check them on the eighth, you know, just to make sure they went through. So there's some of that, like seeing this bucket go down and not knowing where the, when that you're going to turn that corner. I think it's like anything that, you know, when people try to create abundance, I think, you know, that they usually get like, right, it stops, right, and they, they bail, and they yes. get a job. So there's this like, yes, that fear. 
they, it, it brings them out just when they're about to, to turn a corner. So I think for me with my positive psychology training and, you know, if I'm going to put it out in the world, how to get through the stuff, I had to do a lot of self-coaching mm-hmm. and I had my own coach and my own mentor. Mm-hmm. I think that was really helpful. Um, and I'll be quite honest, I'm still working on what, what narrowing down what my business is and the ways that I want to help people. I think I've turned that corner mm-hmm. of where now, you know, I can pay a mortgage. <laughs> That's right. great. You know, I, I know you and I talk about that a lot. Like we can pay for vacation again. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's very powerful. Yes. Not, you know, checking off those boxes is helpful mm-hmm. because you kind of take a deep breath. Um, but I know I do a lot of planning about what I want my business to be in a year from now. And that looks scary too. Yeah. And, and it'll change again. I think that's the yes. thing that <clears throat> a lot of my clients struggle with. Um, well, I want it to look like this, but it doesn't really, th- then they put it into practice and they find that, well, out in the world, that doesn't quite work. That's not quite what the world wants or needs, but the world needs this thing like five degrees over. Can you take what you've got and go in that direction? It's kind of like what you said before about, can you learn to love this aspect of it? Because this is what the world needs. Needs. Yeah, I think that's, um, and I think, you know, we're proud and, and everybody's asking you what you do, right? So I used to, I literally had this conversation with Scott. He's down in North Carolina and he got me a client. And I was like, what did, what did you tell him that I do? Yeah. And I what made did he him, tell him? He did. He, I'm an executive coach. Okay. You know, I used to, you know, want to wander around it and I'm like a change agent and I'm this and I'm that. And I realized all the extra stuff that I've learned, I can help business owners put into practice. So I can help be a life coach to them and I can help them with their mind chatter and their worry and their fear, which is not traditional business coaching. No. But then I can really help them with strategy. Here's how you build culture. Here's your five-year and your three-year plan. And, and so I'm, I'm an executive coach that also really loves leadership training. Then how does it feel to say that finally after it all It feels this so good because you see, when you asked me in the beginning, I rambled around it. Yes, you did. You used to ramble. You know? That's right. That's right. It's and a ra- you used to be like, and I can also, there was a, there were a lot of ands. Ands. And my mentor holds me like, he is not always fun. Just like we hate our own coach. Like co- people hate us. When we coach <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, Lisa. Yes. Like I've said to him, he's like, you've got three businesses. Who's going to run those? And, and he's great because I, you know, it, I kind of hold on to what my business, I, I know what my business is going to be in a year from now, mm-hmm. but I'm doing the work to get the foundation so that I can move. I can have other people do this because I want employees. I want to build my own team. Yeah. I, I miss that. So I want coaches on my team and I want to help develop them. So I think that your point about I'm building the foundation, I know where I'm going, but I'm taking this time to build the foundation is an important point because a lot of people with an idea get really frustrated, especially creative people. They want to have it now because they probably their idea has been following them around for a long time. That's the number one thing. Number two, they can see it perfectly in their heads. Like if they could just like lift it out of their head and put it into the real world, boom, right? But that's not how it works. You have to put in, and it's stupid stuff like building a website, getting an email, an automatic email server, hiring a virtual assistant. It's all of those little steps that are, they're boring to creative people. And that's, that's what, and that's what makes people want to jump ship also. How am I going to make money? And oh my God, I have to do all this boring shit. All this boring shit. All this boring shit. <laughs> and then. And I have no money because I would pay some, you know, everybody's <laughs> like, you know, automate it, you know, delegate it. I'm like, well, I have no money. It costs you money know? to do that. I, that's why I did my first website and couldn't wait to get it reskinned because right. it was not visual. But it was done and it was out there and it let you move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. So this is such good stuff for people to hear because, you know, you're somebody living, living the dream that you created. Um, you've been learning a lot along the way and you found that you kind of bounced and you circled. Um, and now you're just really narrowing in. And I, I love watching you say, I'm an executive coach who specializes in leadership and culture. Like that helps me know exactly 
who you are, who you help. And now when I bump into somebody who needs that, I can say, oh my God, I have the perfect person for you. Cause that's not what I do. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it's actually, it helps your business so much to commit. And I love the message that it took you six months to a year to get the commitment down. And that there's and no I practiced that. a lot. No. And I had to wear a bunch of hats to get my business up and running, mm -hmm. but it is a relief to be more focused I and say, I, well, I said, I couldn't say I no. Right. I said yes to everything. So now I can say, Oh no, I, you know, I don't do life coaching. I really am focused on small business owners or, you know, executive leadership that are, are doing this. But I know but a I couple have, of great life coaches, I know, right? I, I can I send you a great to. life coach that I can yes. refer you to. Oh, this is such good stuff. So what's one thing you wish you had done differently? Is there anything that you wish you had done differently? Um, no. Okay. Honestly, no. I think, I think, well, you know, I love positive psychology and mm -hmm. Colleen and I went on, you know, a, a six months journey into learning more about that. And I always was this positive person that couldn't articulate to other business people. Like I couldn't bridge that gap. So positive psychology, you know, it's the science behind wellness and, and it gives me like a very technical language that I can use with business people. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like practicing those things. Like I'm, I've, I've had a wonderful life that has been painful and joyful and I'm always exactly where I'm supposed to be, even in, you know, in the pain of it. And I actually enjoyed this past year because I lowered my standards of myself and that was really hard. Like this is for a perfectionist. Enough. I ditch, like, you know, we talk about, we, we work on per ditching the perfectionist. Mm -hmm. It's practice. You have to practice it, but it has been nice to be like, well, that was good enough. So like, is the thing that you wish you had, the th is the thing well, that maybe you, that's it, right? Would you, would you say to somebody like, you have to be kind to yourself during this process and understand that it's all, <clears throat> you actually said this to me one time in our class, you said, um, it's all just an experiment. Yes. Experiments. I, that is one of the things I did from, um, I, my coach, um, Tanya Mundo, who is amazing coach. Like everybody says coaching is so, such a saturated business. No, it's thank God. <laughs> like you can find that perfect person for you. Right. And she's right. my person. She's my role model. She's like just in front of me, a woman of similar age. I think we need those. Like we don't need the, the person up here. We need the person like right here. You know, I want to talk about this for a moment because I was just listening to a mindset coach this morning before our call. And she talked about how for entrepreneurs, this seven figure mindset is a huge leap for us to make. We can, if we are, if we started making three figures a month, going to four figures is going to feel big. And when we make four figures a month, going to five figures is going to feel crazy per month. Like having a seven figure mindset mm -hmm. is a leap that many of us are not able to make because our brains just aren't wired for that. And so I love what you said, you know, find the person who's just ahead of you mm -hmm. and who can, who, who, it, who can, who it seems realistic that you can catch up to because by the time you get there, she's going to be a little bit ahead of you again. And I think, you know, we talk about sister companies too. I think that person that sees that you're working hard and striving there will also bring you up like the good ones bring you with them. Right. Yes. And I, that's how I feel about, I mean, I do pay her quite handsomely. <laughs> yes. but she's okay, root, right. She is rooting for me. She shares so much of her content with me. You know, every um, month on the first, my, uh, my coach gets paid automatically. And I see it like, like today is October 1st and I see it come out of my bank account in the morning. And I think that is the best money that I'm going to spend this month. All month. It's like, it's like a Christmas gift to myself. So Lisa, yeah. tell us how people can find you and use you and, and get a hold of your, your products and get in touch. Actually, thanks Jen, because I am not the best at self promotion. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, i I have a website. It's brassringstools.com. Um, brassringstools.com. I'm going to put this in the, in the comments. Oh, thanks. Um, I am launching two pro programs, online automated programs. I use them all the time in my coaching. Um, so I decided to actually automate them. You'll be very proud of me. I did not love to videotape myself, but I did it. 
Um, so for me, two of the programs, um, one is around engagement, positive engagement. So I'm going to launch that up most likely this week. Awesome. I just, you know, the perfection has kicked in. So yes. I think my, my you designers like, like, shut up, <laughs> we're going. <laughs> but um, I'm doing a time and energy management one too. Oh, which okay. I use that foundation with all of my executives. They're all over the place. They're picking up their laundry. I'm like, yes. why are you picking up the dry cleaning? Let me yes. help you with that. Yes. 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 So I find that when I, I have some um, programs that I do constantly, it's nice to have them kind of watch them separately so totally. we can do work. Yeah, so, so that you're not wasting that hour with them, like talking them. about this. Yes, I totally, that's brilliant. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have those two I'm launching. Um, they're on, they're going to go live on my website, but I also want to talk about Colleen and I, Colleen Camiso is my business partner. Yes. Yeah, so I interviewed Colleen. She was on. A oh, great. Yes. So did she talk about positive psychology? Yes, but please talk about it again because everybody right. needs to hear about positive psychology. Positive psychology. I use it in so much of my coaching and it's really the way our brains are wired and working with that wiring as opposed to most of us work against it. Mm -hmm. We're understanding that we have negativity bias. I was... I like hopped on something so quickly the other day and I was like, Ooh, there it is. <laughs> That's my brain talking, you know, and I going, okay, how can I make this a more, positive story. Mm. So, and that's really hard to do. We were talking about watching the news and things like we're bombarded with such negativity yes. and it's literally feeding that negativity bias. So positive psychology is really around awareness. Um, and then some strategies towards, um, you know, just moving to a more flourishing state in our lives, which I always love because I go, oh, that sounds hokey. So I reframe all of that with my business people. Yes. They love it. They have no idea. I'm like, strategy, strategy right? <laughs> right? My drip campaign. And they're like, oh my gosh, I don't worry anymore. And that's so helpful. And or they still worry. No. So Colleen and I have a positive psychology daily dose Facebook group. It's our yes, fun. Can you tell us how to get into that Facebook group and is it free or is it a paid? It's one? absolutely free. Um, we've, we've got quite a lot of people in there. Um, and Colleen and I do a, we swap weeks. So we pick a little, a little, uh, subject from our positive psychology training and we just do a little drip campaign. It's not, um, we have fun with it. One day I posted like I always laugh in the morning. My hair is like the heat miser <laughs> is big and it's different. It's like claymation hair. So I, I actually posted a picture of that. I'm like, this is what makes me giggle in the morning. And, you know, so we try to have fun with it and, um, you know, we do a weekly reflection after, and, and there's a tool on Friday. So what's um, the name of that group so that people can go to it? Positive psychology, dot, dot, dot. My friend Colleen did a dot, dot, dot daily dose. Um, and if you click on it and you ask to join the group, there are, we don't even do like the questions you usually have. We just pop people in there unless you look like a robot from Russia. <laughs> Everybody else is welcome. If you're a um, Russian robot, you are not welcome, but everybody that's else is the only welcome. exclusion to robot. Okay, that's pretty awesome. But it's fun, and I think it gives – it's a closed group, which a lot of times positivity is, you know, you, oh, you're that person. I got a lot of that growing up. I got a lot of that in the corporate world. Oh, Lisa's the – oh, it's fine. We're going to, like, work on the positive aspects of this. And it was almost, like, shameful. Like, I got shamed, <laughs> not in the worst way ever. But it was like, what, you know, oh, there she, you know, there so she annoying. is. It's so annoying. You're so, so annoying. Positive. And like a lot of eye rolling. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, it's, it's a nice close group. And it allows people to be like, oh my gosh, I do that. And I'm not the worst person in the world. Right. And also mm -hmm. with positive psychology, it, it teaches you, it doesn't teach you that the world is rosy and unicorns are mm -hmm. pooping rainbows. It, it nope. teaches you how to deal with the dark side of, of living. Absolutely. Which is, nope. which is vital right now. There's a lot of heavy stuff out there. Vitality was my subject this morning on Facebook. Oh, well, uh, you'd put me in the group, right? Yes. Okay. Thank nope. you. Lisa, thank you so much for your time today. I love hearing your story. I'm sure that other people are inspired by your story and I have seen your content and I know that it's excellent. So if you are looking for a leadership coach, an executive coach, somebody to help you through these times where you feel overwhelmed and burned out, Lisa can help you. So reach out. I'm going to put her website address in the comments. And if you have any questions for her, please let us know. But thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Jen. I appreciate it.